Gerne. Okay, I'm very uh, happy that you are here and really big happy. applause for you. And Thank you. Where did all the fun go? Okay, so hi, my name is Talia and like most people here I'm a designer and I've also got a little studio in Vienna called Talia Studio. So it's basically me and then a whole bunch of rotating talents that come into the studio and enrich the projects that we're working on. And I was really kindly invited by the IDRV to talk about social design, which is what the studio has been focusing on since 2011. But I think I'm going to talk more about my, you know, my own evolving discoveries and disappointments in this emerging field and try and find out what it really might be within the currently collapsing and rapidly changing paradigms and misunderstandings of what the product design field is nowadays and might be. So quite frankly, this year I had a really, really shit time and I was really, really sad and I just sat down and I was like, social design, you know, where did all the fun go? Um, but maybe we start asking the question, what is social design? And to be honest, I don't really know yet. Um, but the only way that I can explain it right now is to maybe compare it to a um, more established design discipline, maybe furniture. So in, I think that in furniture design, um, people usually start with an obsession with a new material or innovative manufacturing production technique. But for me, the only way that I know how to work is by starting with people. I perceive the world um, with the relationships that we have with ourselves, the way that we interact with each other, and also the way that in we interact with our surroundings. So the material culture that I dive into, explore and create, is always a reflection on that. And maybe that's why I call myself a social designer. But like furniture design and the rest of the, the, rest of the story, you know, like bringing a project into a product, an affordable, viable product, it's basically the same. Um, we're completely dependent on business structures like um, sourcing materials and, um, and logistics and production distribution and marketing and investment like any other industry. And my journey starts with water. I, I um, finished uni 2009 with a project called Aqua Iris, which is a um, conceptual portable water purifier for, imagined for countries living within the tropics. And it works independently of infrastructure. You basically scoop up some dirty water, it filters through, and these magic crystals change UVB to UVC rays. And what you get at the end is a glass of pristine, clean and safe drinking water. And it was really popular when I finished uni. It went around the internet. It was invited to um, exhibit you know, from California to the Biennale of Industrial Design in Slovenia. And it was also one of the five poster projects for this wonderful exhibition that happened last year in the MAC called Made For You. So it was like all over Vienna. My ego was like, <sighs> fantastic. And it was also shortlisted for the Victor Papanek Social Design Award. And so during that award ceremony, I was approached by one of the jury members who congratulated me on my project. She was like, oh my God, it's amazing. And I was really chuffed because I really respect that person's opinion. I said, thank you, but I'm also really cheeky. So I said, you know, why didn't it win if you liked it so much? And she said, well, the jury had a problem with your project because they felt that it was too beautiful for your intended users. And I think that's exactly the moment when my naivety stopped and I started asking myself questions and trying to find answers of what is social design. You see, the problem with Aquarius isn't that it's too beautiful. You know, it, it, it's just the problem with Aquarius is that it wouldn't be a good product because it would be too expensive if the converter crystals had, um, existed anyway. And if you look at the user group, you know, if you're using, looking at people who live in, in very rural areas, it's a family of two parents, a grandparents and kids, and uh, some farm animals, and they definitely need more than um, one glass of water um, to, to sustain themselves. In fact, they need 500 liters of water a day, and they're not going to hang around waiting for it to drip out glass by glass. So let's go back to that controversial notion of beauty as an apparently invalid human experience. If we look at cultures and civilizations, small and large around the world, we see that beauty is an expression of humanity and it's abundant. So that makes me ask, why can something be too beautiful when it's obviously part of our core human experience? And how is that a criteria for negative judgment? 
I mean, isn't the very fact that we as designers make beautiful things with tangible benefits the very core and poetry of our trade? So it got me thinking about other notions of humanity, of, of like being human, and what are they, and what as we as designers can evoke and create products for and celebrate. And I think that maybe as a designer, we can't change the world for the better, especially not alone. Um, but certainly we can create material culture in a beautiful and playful manner for pleasure's sake. Um, and that's the value of our practice itself. You know, it doesn't matter if it's a teacup or a highly efficient uh, cow manure oven. If we can make it into a pleasurable experience through its form, function, and also the curated emotions that they evoke, then we probably make one more person happy in the world and therefore helping towards making a better place. But um, I'd like to conclude that um, certainly we as naturally and intuitively empathetic designers can help companies and organizations create viable and enriching products that adhere to our basic needs such as drinking water, food security, clean air, sanitation. Um, I'd like to add now some also honest basic needs that are often forgotten in our search to do good. And I'd like to add things like joy, beauty, pain, loss, honesty, playfulness, fun, love, sex, and the need for intoxication. Thank you. Thank you very much, Talia. Thank you much.